This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. But Paul. Tamosa would combine the two forces, and before the enemy could rally, drive on past Tel El Daba and seize the enemy citadel of Avaris. It was a bold and brilliant plan, which, if it succeeded, would bring to a close at one stroke the war with the Hyksos that had already raged through two lifetimes. Nefer had been taught that battle and glory were the reasons for his existence on this earth. But even at the advanced age of fourteen years, they had so far eluded him. He longed with all his soul to ride to victory and immortality at his father's side. Before his protest could pass his lips, Pharaoh forestalled him. What is the first duty of a warrior? he demanded of the boy. Nefer dropped his eyes. It is obedience, Majesty, he replied softly, reluctantly. Never forget it. Pharaoh nodded and turned away. Nefer felt himself spurned and discarded. His eyes smarted and his upper lip quivered, but Taita's gaze stiffened him. He blinked to clear his vision of tears and took a pull from the water skin that hung on the side rail of the chariot before turning to the old Magus with a jaunty toss of his thick, dust caked curls. Show me the monument, Tata, he commanded. The ill assorted pair made their way through the concourse of chariots, men, and horses that choked the narrow street of the ruined city. Stripped naked in the heat, Twenty troopers had climbed down the deep shafts to the ancient wells and formed a bucket chain to bring the sparse, bitter water to the surface. Once those wells had been bountiful enough to support a rich and populous city that sat full upon the trade route between the Nile and the Red Sea. Then, centuries ago, an earthquake had shattered the water-bearing stratum and blocked the subterranean flow. The city of Galala had died of thirst. Now there was scarcely sufficient water to slake the thirst of two hundred horses and top up the water skins before the wells were dry. Taita led Nefer through the narrow lanes, past temples and palaces, now inhabited only by the lizard and the scorpion, until they reached the deserted central square. In its centre stood the monument to Lord Tanus and his triumph over the armies of bandits who had almost choked the life out of the richest and most powerful nation on earth. The monument was a bizarre pyramid of human skulls, cemented together and protected by a shrine made of red rock slabs. A thousand and more skulls grinned down upon the boy as he read aloud the inscription on the stone portico, Our severed heads bear witness to the battle at this place in which we died beneath the sword of Tarnus Lord Harab. May all the generations that follow learn from that mighty Lord's deeds the glory of the gods and the power of righteous men. Thus decreed in the fourteenth year of the reign of the god Pharaoh Mamosa. Squatting in the monument's shadow, Taita watched the prince as he walked around the monument, pausing every few paces with hands on hips to study it from every angle. Although Taita's expression was remote, his eyes were fond. His love for the lad had its origins in two other lives. The first of these was Lostris, Queen of Egypt. Taita was a eunuch, but he had been gelded after puberty and had once loved a woman. Because of his physical mutilation, Taita's love was pure, and he had lavished it all on Queen Lostris, Nefer's grandmother. It was a love so encompassing that even now, twenty years after her death, it stood at the centre of his existence. The other person from whom his love for Nefer sprang was Tarnus, Lord Harab, to whom this monument had been erected. He had been dearer than a brother to Taita. They were both gone now, Lostris and Tarnus, but their blood mingled strongly in this child's veins. From their illicit union so long ago had sprung the child who had grown up to become the pharaoh Tamosa, who now led the squadron of chariots that had brought them here, the father of Prince Nefer. Tata, show me where it was that you captured the leader of the robber barons. Nefer's voice cracked with excitement and the onset of puberty. Was it here? 
he ran to the broken-down wall at the south side of the square. Tell me the story again. No.